This video is going to show you how to run two different forms of non-parametric correlation in JASP. The first one we're going to look at is going to be Spearman's correlation and the second one we're going to look at is going to be Kendall's tau. The example data we're going to look at today is quite topical at this very moment in time and we're looking at um, people's perceptions of the extent to which Theresa May, the current UK Prime Minister, hopefully not for long, is doing a bad job with their negotiations with the EU about Brexit. Um, here's Theresa May here, desperately looking for friends here at an EU summit. We've got 30 participants in our data set here and on a 1 to 100 visual analog scale they're asked to rate the extent to which they thought Theresa May was doing a bad job. So low scores mean they don't think she did a particularly bad job High scores, for example, this person here, um, that's indicative of them thinking they do a really, she's doing a really bad job. And then we've got news sources. This is the number of minutes our participants spend on an average day, either reading news sources or watching news sources. So obviously, a high number of minutes means that they are spending more time engaging with the news. Um, so if we want to run a correlation on this data, we've got um, scale data, it's continuous measurements of data, so we need to check the distribution. Um, the simplest way we can do this in JASP does seem a little bit counterintuitive, but we can go to t-tests, we can go to one sample, just untick that for now, and we can ask for normality checks, click these across. And what this basically does is produce us a Shapiro-Wilk test and this tests um, the distribution of the data. If it's statistically significant, as it says here, this suggests a deviation from normality. So as we can see, our first variable, Theresa May doing a bad job, does not have a normal distribution to it. So we can probably argue that the appropriate statistic to give would be a Spearman's correlation. So we know we've got to do a Spearman's correlation with this. So to run a Spearman's correlation in JASP, a very straightforward procedure, we go to regression, as you can see, it looks like an old scatter plot there, and go to correlation matrix. Its default is Pearson's parametric correlation, but we'll get rid of that. What we want to do is a Spearman's correlation, and then we just simply click across our two variables. Because it's JASP, it does our that produces a very nice output for us and um, produces a correlation matrix in pretty much an APA format and as we can see the correlation between trades made in a bad job perceptions and the number of new sources is a statistically significant positive correlation We've got correlation coefficients of Spearman's row of 0.37 and the p-value for this is 0.044 and we could write this up in an APA format, we'll just simply say there was a significant positive correlation between perceptions that Theresa May was doing a bad job and the number of minutes participants viewed new sources on an average day. And we'd report our statistics. We also need to give um, our degrees of freedom for this. Unfortunately, JASP doesn't do this. But the degrees of freedom is simply N minus 1, the number of participants minus 1. So in this case, we've got 30 participants, so our degrees of freedom that we will report is 29. So just a few other things that we could do. We could ask it to flag significant correlations. Of course we know that's significant because we can see our p-value there. But if we then report significant you can see how that show us that we've got a significant correlation. So p-value of less than 0 0.05. The other thing we could do, we could ask for a correlation matrix. So there we go, we've got our correlation between our two variables. As you can see, we can see our positive correlation there in our scatter plot. So we've got a two-tailed hypothesis here. If we had a one-tailed hypothesis in which we made a specific prediction that it would be correlated positively, we've got that, and as you can see, our p-value is now halved. If we say, however, correlated negatively, you see something very different. As you can see, we're nowhere near statistically significant. That's because our correlation is positive. If our hypothesis is one-tailed, there's going to be a negative correlation. And of course, we cannot, we would not have a statistically significant effect. And as you can see, it will change our p-value to 9, 7, 
8, which of course is 1 minus 0 0.022. 2. So you can choose um, a priori to have a one-tailed hypothesis, positive or negative. However, what you certainly wouldn't do under any circumstances, say if this was borderline, you wouldn't click that to ensure you had a statistically significant correlation. That's where a real bad statistical practice lies and it should be avoided at all cost. There's another option here which is Kendall Tau B. And for that one, I am going to open a new data set. So this is this is a similar data set, but as you can see the numbers are quite different. This is where the people think Theresa May did a bad job, however, this one is scored on a one to five like it scale. And then our other variable, new sources is the number of new sources that our participant look at today. So like the range of places they get the news from. So this, these people only look at two things. These people down here, this person down here looks at seven different news sources in an average day. So it's quite a different form of data. The first thing to note is, well, our first variable here is now ordinal and it has been labeled as such in the original data set. And of course the variance in this data is very different as well. If we look at our distribution quickly, as you can see, neither of these measures have a normal distribution because our Shapiro-Wilkes test is statistically significant. We know the data does not have a normal distribution. So another thing that's worth looking at in this data set is the fact that this scale is ordinal. And as you can see, if we look at this, a third, so 10 of our participants score here on five, doing a very bad job indeed. Then we've got lots of fours, okay? Another ten has gone to four, and then we've got a few threes, twos, and ones. So in this ordinal data, what we've essentially got is lots of tied ranks, people giving here the same score. And this is actually the situation in which Kendall's Tower is often used when you have lots of these tied ranks in the data. Kendall's Tower isn't actually that commonly taught, and it's not that commonly used. I think the only reason behind this is it's difficult to work out by hand. So traditionally wasn't taught at undergraduate level because it was a pain for people to do it by hand. But now there's no reason why we shouldn't use these tests when they are appropriate. So we know we haven't got normal distribution. We've got ordinal data with lots of side ranks. And in this one, again, the more news sources as well that people look at. Again, you can see there's quite a lot of side ranks. There's lots of fives in the data set, for example. So we're going to use Kendall's Tau on this data set. So again, we go to regression, we go to correlation matrix. We uncheck the default. We click our cross our two variables, and then we ask for our candles tab. And as you can see in our correlation matrix, we've got a candles tab value of 0.32, and this is statistically significant. Our p-value is 0 0.038, and we could just write this up accordingly. There is a significant positive correlation between perceptions that Theresa May was doing a bad job and the number of new sources participants viewed on a daily basis. And he writes up our Kendall's Tau statistic along with the degrees of freedom. Just like before, the degrees of freedom for Kendall's Tau is n minus 1. So we've got 30 participants in this data set as well, so it's 29. We report our Kendall's Tau to two decimal places and we give our p-value as well. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we can have, we could flag our significant correlations and so on. We could also get a correlation matrix for our variables and we also could have our one-tailed test if we have an a priori hypothesis. This is one-tailed and we'd also be happy rejecting a significant result in the opposite direction as predicted as non-significant. 